But then how do you really know for certain that your loved ones are safe with a stranger? I mean, can you ever really trust another human being, Greg? Sure, I think so. No, the answer is you cannot. Let me show you something. We start the program with an update on the troubled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. On Saturday afternoon, the operator of the plant began to remove hydrogen that is built up in pipes connected to the number one reactor. Tokyo Electric Power Company, or TEPCO, last month found that the level of hydrogen inside pipes connected to the number one reactor containment vessel accounted for between 61 and 63 percent of the total gas present. TEPCO says an explosion is unlikely, as there is no oxygen in the pipes now. It's like hanging by your fingernails. Yeah, it's stable, but you're hanging by your fingernails. It also explains that Saturday's work to lower hydrogen levels will be conducted by injecting nitrogen into the pipes. Do they have control of the situation at the site? No. It's still a ticking time bomb. The company says it will use special hoses that do not generate static electricity to prevent any explosions while releasing hydrogen outside the reactor building. Following a government instruction, TEPCO is planning to check the level of hydrogen in pipes linked to the number two and number three reactors. Realize that after the big Sumatra tsunami, mm -hmm. uh, 90 days after, three months after that, there was a huge aftershock. If they have another aftershock and they're not in cold shutdown yet till next year, the accident could start all over again. Japan's environment minister has visited a northeastern Japanese city to study ways to dispose of debris left by the March earthquake and tsunami. Goshi Hosono visited Miyako City in Iwate Prefecture on Saturday, where he met with Mayor Masanori Yamamoto. Under an agreement with the Tokyo Metropolitan Government, debris in the city will be transferred to Tokyo for disposal. But other disaster-hit municipalities are still unable to find any local governments willing to accept debris because of concern over storage or handling problems, especially in regard to radioactive substances in the wreckage. Hosono told Mayor Yamamoto that the central government views the clearing of disaster-hit areas as a top priority for reconstruction. Miyako City is the first place to find somewhere to transport debris. I will do all I can to support other cities to find disposal sites. Hosono visited a temporary storage site where he was briefed on a plan to transfer 500,000 tons of debris from Iwate Prefecture to destinations outside the prefecture. In your view, did they not know how bad it was or they knew and they didn't tell or they just were completely blown away by the scope of the disaster? I'm a physicist and we tried to reconstruct the accident in our computers given the feeble amount of information they gave us. We knew it was much more severe than they were saying because radiation was coming out left and right. So in other words, they lied to us. The United States has eased its evacuation advisory for US citizens in Japan regarding the Fukushima Daiichi plant. The State Department advised U.S. citizens on Friday to stay more than 20 kilometers away from the plant, in line with a no-entry zone set by the Japanese government. The previous U.S. advisory recommended avoiding areas within 80 kilometers of the plant. 
The U.S. alert also includes some areas and spots outside the 20-kilometer no-entry zone as the Japanese government has advised residents there to evacuate. But the State Department warned pregnant women, children and older people not to stay within 30 kilometers of the plant. The State Department says it updated the advisory based on additional data released by the Japanese government. Americans think this crisis is over, or that some even think that maybe it's solved or it's contained. It's, it's not. We're, what's happening right now? In the last two weeks, everything we knew about that accident has been turned upside down. We were told three partial meltdowns, don't worry about it. Now we know it was 100% core melt in all three reactors. Radiation, minimal, that was released. Now we know it was comparable to the radiation at Chernobyl. And as far as evacuation, yeah, 12 miles, that's it. You don't have to evacuate beyond 12 miles. Now they find hot spots, four hot spots outside the evacuation zone. 34,000 school children and now have radiation badges when they go to school. Kindergartners with radiation badges. Down to badges. four years of age. Can you imagine that? Kindergarten kids with radiation badges. Japanese government insiders reveal Fukushima secrets. This is behind the headlines on Global Research TV at grtv.ca. The former Prime Minister of Japan has revealed that scientific advisors to the Japanese government warned that evacuations of as many as 30 million people up to 250 kilometers away from Fukushima would have to take place in the event of a worst-case scenario at the stricken nuclear plant in the country's northeast. The proposal would have seen Tokyo itself subject to evacuation, but the idea was immediately rejected because of the chaos it would have caused. The revelations come as Naoto Kan, who stepped down as Prime Minister last month, finally opened up about the deliberations that took place in the wake of Japan's nuclear disaster. In a tense interview with Kyoto News, Khan admitted that the proposal to evacuate Tokyo was a crucial moment when I wasn't sure whether Japan could continue to function as a state. Just last week, another government insider, Kenichi Matsumoto, confirmed the plans for Tokyo's evacuation and other details of the government's response to the crisis to Radio Australia. In the interview, Matsumoto, former advisor to Prime Minister Khan, revealed that TEPCO not only hid information from the government, but that in the wake of the disaster, they suggested abandoning the plant altogether. First, TEPCO did not convey accurate information about the accident to the Prime Minister. It tried to make the disaster look small. Then TEPCO's headquarters wanted to evacuate the nuclear plant, but the chief of the facility vowed not to leave. So Prime Minister Khan was outraged because he wasn't getting proper information or the truth. Earlier this year, Toshiso Kosako, an advisor to the government on radiation safety, resigned his position in protest of radiation exposure levels for elementary schools that he said were inexcusable. Meanwhile, authorities in Kashiwa City, Chiba Prefecture, have announced that they will have to shut down garbage incineration plants that were being used to burn radioactive materials. The plants discovered incinerated ash to contain as much as 70,800 becquerels of radioactive cesium per kilogram almost 10 times the national landfill level of 8,000 becquerels per kilogram. The Nembu Clean Center in Kashiwa has already stored 134 tons of incinerated ash and is running out of space to accommodate the radioactive materials. Goshi Hosono, the minister in charge of the nuclear crisis, announced last week that the government is ready to lift evacuation advisories for five towns near the Fukushima plant. The towns, in the so-called emergency evacuation preparedness zone between 20 and 30 kilometers from the plant, are home to 30,000 people and were under a voluntary evacuation order which will now be lifted, allowing residents to return to their homes once they have been decontaminated. Reacting to the decision, Tetsuji Imanaka, a professor of nuclear engineering in Kyoto University said, the government may be easing restrictions because concern about reactor explosions has diminished. Radiation contamination of the land hasn't decreased so far. The lifting of the evacuation advisory comes even as nuclear experts slammed the government for revealing for the first time last week the results of tests conducted in late March that showed plutonium fallout from the disaster has traveled as far as 45 kilometers northwest of the plant, far beyond the evacuation preparedness zone. Michiaki Furukawa of the Citizens Nuclear Information Center lashed out at the government's tardiness. The results came too late. The government should have conducted the tests much earlier. The tests also revealed strontium, another dangerous radioactive element, as far as 50 miles from the plant. 
they knew how much radiation was coming out, they knew the danger, they knew how much core melting was taking place, but they tried to put a happy face on it. As a reporter, within hours of the earthquake and tsunami, within hours, not even a day, there were already statements from the company and from the International Atomic Energy uh, Association saying that there had been safe shutdown of all of the reactors. And we know, of course, in the end that that simply wasn't true. But from the very beginning, they were trying to tell us that this was a safe situation. Within hours of the accident, we now know it was like the Keystone Cops. People that are clueless, headless, just running around crazy, not knowing what to do.